When have you chosen to hide something? Maybe mom asks if you brushed your teeth and you say, well, yeah, even though you just ran water over your toothbrush. Or maybe you don't think you can ever understand math, but instead of asking for help, you sneak a peek at your friend's test paper to double check your answers. Or maybe you're kind to your little sister when your friends are watching, but you snap at her when they leave. You're so annoying, just go away. Truth is, we all mess up. We all make wrong choices. And instead of owning up to what you've done, it's easy to start hiding, to cover up, to show the world a fake smile, while inside you feel angry or ashamed. But there is more to the truth. No matter how badly you mess up, you are deeply loved. The God who made the entire universe knew you and chose you before the world began. There is nothing you can do to make God stop loving you. When you begin to know and experience God's amazing love, you don't need to hide anymore. You can admit you didn't actually brush your teeth and go back to finish the job. You can confess your struggle with math and ask for help. You can draw on God's love to help you treat your sister just as well when you're alone as when people are watching. The more you choose to be truthful in whatever you say and do, the more others can see God at work in you. They can see how God never changes and never lets go. That's why integrity is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud, it's all about living loud. Why would I worry? You never show up late And you don't make mistakes I'm not in a hurry No I'm walking at your pace Cause you showed a better way In the night I won't be afraid You're by my side So I know I'm okay So I will sing At the top of my lungs The loudest praise And it goes like Welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about integrity while we take a look at the tale of two trees. Hmm, I wonder if either tree has a tire swing. Hmm. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about integrity, which is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. So what's up with the tire? My dad got a flat tire. See the nail right here? I mean, we can try to uh, pull it once more. Uh, uh. <laughs> ah. 
It's like Excalibur. That's not coming out. What's it doing in here? I figured we can use it for something. Tire swing. Dog bed. Workout equipment. Come on, come on, you can do it. I don't come think on. I can do it. You got it. Getting ripped. Our guest today knows his way around a tire. In fact, he's an expert on cars. Seriously? So cool. Yeah, his name is Mike, and he's a mechanic who lives in Ontario. Well, when do we get to meet him? Right now. Hi, Mike. We are so excited to have you on the show with us today. Hey, guys. Pleasure to be here. So we're going to ask you a couple of questions today, Mike. But first, we know you're a mechanic, but... What does a mechanic actually do? Well, just like a doctor, you know, takes care of the body and makes sure, you know, you're healthy when you're sick, I'm kind of like a car doctor. I take care of cars and I make sure when they're not working well, I get them back up to speed. Okay, so how did you get interested in working with cars? Well, it kind of has started as a kid. I've always been interested in small motors and fixing and repairing things. And as a kid, I loved fixing bikes. How did you get started as a mechanic? Well, I actually started at a dealership when I, when I first wanted to be a mechanic. I was fixing cars, but over time, they wanted us to, you know, I felt the pressure to make repairs that really customers didn't really need and do things that, you know, it's not really needed or the customer didn't really want it. So I just didn't feel comfortable that way. And I actually had somebody tell me that I had to be one person at the dealership and one person at home. And that wasn't okay with me. So I left and I went to a smaller shop here. I get to take care of the customers. I do exactly what they want and exactly what we say we're going to do. I do quality work and they're satisfied. So Mike, we can see that you're kind of at a shop right now. So tell me about some of the things that you guys are working on right now. What type of cars? What are you doing to the inside? Just, just give me those details. We get to work on everything here at our shop from small cars to trucks to lawnmowers. Right now, I'm working on this car sitting right here. The customer wants me to make sure that their car is working exactly as it should. So I will check things like here, this is the air filter, where I would make sure that the car's air filter is clean and the engine can breathe. And here, this is the dipstick where the engine oil goes in. It's like the lifeblood of the engine. If it's not good, the engine will not work well. And also, the battery. This is a very essential part of the car. You have to make sure that the battery's in good working order and these connections are nice and tight. Because if they're not, the car may not even start at all. Can you talk more about what it takes to get a car to run really, really well? The best part of it all is you have to take care of what's on the inside. If you don't, eventually the car will break down and maybe not even work at all. So Mike, we know you love working on cars, but we gotta ask, what is your favorite kind of car? Classic cars and hot rods. I absolutely love them. When I'm driving down the road with my kids, we make it a game to pick them out, point them out, check the colors, and really just love the sound of the old hot rods. These cars are awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Your job is so awesome, and it was a pleasure talking to you today. Thanks, guys. Wow, it's like I've got a whole new perspective on what's inside. Speaking of which, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Luke. When God sent Jesus as a baby, angels announced his birth. But for most of his life, Jesus lived quietly and faithfully, loving God and loving others. Around the time Jesus was 30 years old, he came to the Jordan River. God's voice spoke from heaven. You are my son, and I love you. I am very pleased with you. Soon after, Jesus began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. He chose a group of friends to share life with him. In everything Jesus said and did, he showed people what God is like. And over and over, he pointed out that what's on the inside matters most to God. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. And in today's story, well, <laughs> Things are going to get a bit thorny. <clears throat> Jesus had just chosen his 12 closest friends to help in his work. And when he came down from the mountain with them, a big crowd gathered. 
People had come from all over to hear him and be healed. Jesus did make many people well, but he knew that even more than their bodies, it was the people's hearts that needed help. So Jesus began to teach them many things. A good tree doesn't bear bad fruit, and a bad tree doesn't bear good fruit. Uh, well, that makes sense, right? I mean, if you go up to a nice, healthy apple tree and pick one. Mm. But if you find a tree that looks twisted and stunted and pick some fruit, ah, you're not going to want to bite of that. Jesus continued with the word pictures. You can tell each tree by the kind of fruit it bears. People do not pick figs from thorns, and they don't pick grapes from bushes. In the time of Jesus, figs and grapes were a super important part of what people ate. Figs represented peace and prosperity, and grapes stood for joy and celebration. Finding a good grapevine or fig tree was a big deal. But when Jesus and his friends walked the dusty roads, they would have seen other plants too, including thorny, bushy hedgerows and fig trees choked out by brambles. I mean, are you going to find grapes or figs on one of these? No, I think not. It quickly became clear to the crowd, though, that Jesus was talking about more than just trees and vines. A good man says good things. These come from the good that is stored up in his heart. An evil man says evil things. These come from the evil that is stored up in his heart. A person's mouth says everything that is in their heart. Mic drop. A healthy apple tree produces great fruit, and an unhealthy tree grows bad fruit. They do it without even trying. And we are just the same. If we are in a healthy place, connected to Jesus, good things will come out of us. Our words and actions will reflect Jesus and be encouraging and helpful to others. But when we try to make it on our own, we get more and more stressed out and grumpy. Like an unhealthy tree grows rotten fruit, our words and actions are more likely to spew out and hurt the people around us. Who you are and how you're doing inside will always come out. You might be able to cover up and pretend everything's great for a while, but eventually, the pressure of trying to keep it together will just be too much. You'll end up saying and doing hurtful things, even if you don't mean to. So clearly, we want to be this and not that. Here's the good news. You get to choose which kind of tree you want to be. The night before he was arrested and gave up his life, Jesus told his friends, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain joined to me and I to you, you will bear a lot of fruit. You can't do anything without me. Boom. There it is. That's the key. Like a branch has to be connected to the vine or tree trunk to survive, we were designed for connection to Jesus. And when we're regularly learning more about Jesus and talking with him, things start to change inside. Over time, we become like good branches growing trees, growing good fruit. Now, being a good tree does not mean that you'll never say or do something hurtful, but it does mean that most of the time, your words and actions will be loving. And when you mess up, you can take it right to Jesus and ask for help. After all, you and every single person you meet are made in God's image. And when you follow Jesus, you can be confident that you will become a good tree, growing good fruit. The end. Okay, so if I were a tree, what would I grow? Hmm, maybe walnuts? Walnuts? Not a fruit. Yeah, but you're a little nutty. And you're a lot cheesy. The story, guys? Right. Well, whatever kind, I want to be a good tree. So what's our part in the story? Well, it starts with a choice. You don't live with integrity by accident. The journey begins by choosing to follow Jesus and then to stay connected to him. And there are lots of ways to do that. Oh, for sure. For one of the best ways is to uh, read or listen to scripture about the things Jesus did and said. Love your enemies. Don't worry about tomorrow. Let your light shine before others. My grace is all you need. My power is strongest when you are weak. Yeah, and that's just a start. You can also spend time talking with Jesus in prayer, just like you'd talk with a friend. Yeah, and that means listening, too. When you take time to be still, Jesus might give you a word or a feeling or just a sense that he's there. Even when you get distracted or mess up, that's still a great opportunity to reconnect with Jesus. 
There is nothing you can do that will ever make him love you less. And when you stay connected to Jesus, you can be truthful with your whole life. Yep, you got it. Mm. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Be truthful with your whole life. And stay connected to Jesus. Kind of like how Mike showed us with making sure your car battery is properly connected. So, have you decided what to do with this tire? I'm going to use it as a planter. And grow some good fruit. Or veggies. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. Uh, uh, wait, come back. Runaway tire.